Hey y'all, today we're going to be talking about algebra and compositions of functions. Basically what this is going to let us do is talk about, hey, what's one function plus another function, what does that even mean? And then also, how do we discuss events that depend on other events mathematically speaking? So let's dive in. Now the main idea behind the algebra of functions is relatively simple. So, when we think of algebra, what we typically think of is statements kind of like this. 7 plus 5 equals 12. Having a good day, got that one right. Well, in this case, what we ended up doing, besides just regular addition, is we said that a number plus a number better give us out a number. Now, if we look at a function, so just for an example, let's say f of x equals 2 times x. When I plug in something for x, I'm going to get a number. Well, maybe taking another function as well, g of x equals, I don't know, 4 minus x squared. Yet again, if I plug in an x, I get a number. We can now start to define things like this addition. So what would it maybe mean if I said this? f of x plus g of x. Well, one way to think about it in kind of the abstract and say, well, up here we got a number plus a number gave me a number. So down here, a function plus a function better give me another function. And this is going to be what we define as f plus g, big parentheses, of x. Now, practically speaking, this way might be a little bit easier to understand what this means. This is just kind of the shorthand version of it. So what this actually means right here would really just be f of x, so 2x, the entire function, plus the entire function of g of x, 4 minus x squared. Now doing some simplification, what we can find out is that this thing would just be, well, we can drop the parentheses and reorder a little bit. The function, negative x squared from this, plus 2x, plus 4. And yet again, now you do see that, hey, when we add two functions together, f plus g of x, which is really f of x plus g of x, subbing in for both f and g, and doing some simplification, there wasn't much in this case, we really did land on a function here. So just like we can do algebra in numbers, we can do algebra with functions, where basically the idea is, Whatever your x is, you just add the output of f plus the output of g together. And the simplified version would be just plugging it into this thing right here. All right, now let's talk about what we mean graphically by this f plus g of x. Well, if we paid attention to the last example, what we found with f of x equals 2x and g of x equals 4 minus x squared, we found that when we added them together, what we ended up with was negative x squared plus 2x plus 4. Now remember, how we got there was by saying this thing is just going to be defined to be the first function plus the second function. And then we subbed in at each step, combined some stuff, and that's how we landed on negative x squared plus 2x plus 4. Now, if you turn our attention to the graph, what we see, and I've gone ahead and, go and drawn f of x in green and g of x in red. What would this f plus g of x really look like, or how can we determine it on the graph? Well, let's take some examples. For instance, what would it maybe look at like at 1? Well, just kind of plugging into our function since we have our hands on it, f plus g of 1 better equal negative 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 4. So that's just negative 1 plus 2 plus 4. Doing that math out, we would land on 5. So when I plug in 1 to this function, the y value I get is 5. We can go ahead and put that dot up here in blue. But how we could have also discovered this was by saying that this thing will spit out, it'll just be the addition of the y values. Since f plus g of x is really just f of x plus g of x, both of these are y values for those functions, we would see that the green number of 2, when we plug in 1 to f, we get 2. Well, when we plug in 1 to g, we get 3. 2 plus 3 gave me 5. In a similar fashion, we can fill out other numbers. 
For instance, at x equals 0, in order to fill in the blank on that spot, what we could do is just add the y values of the green and the red line together. So green of 0 plus red of 4 should give me a 4. So we can have a dot and a dot right there. This would be one way to fill out the graph, and then what we could do is just kind of complete the picture. It's going to look something like this. But really all we're doing is taking the y values of each respective function and adding them together, which is consistent with our definition of f plus g of x. Now it is important to notice that in the last example, you could have also just got the graph by figuring out the algebra side of it first and then graphing as usual by plugging in points, connecting the line. Let's talk about some other operations. Since we can do more than adding with just real numbers, we can actually do more than adding with functions as well. In particular, we can talk about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. These are absolutely perfectly fine things to talk about. As we discussed earlier, f plus g of x really just meant add the functions together. f of x plus g of x. In a similar fashion, f minus g of x better be the first function minus the second function. f times g of x, you kind of guessed it already, I'm sure, is the first function times, it's a kind of a bad dot, there we go, times the second function. And last but not least, f divided by g of x is really f of x divided by g of x. This last one comes with a little important caveat. We can't have g of x equaling 0. So for all x values where g of x does not equal 0, we can do this bottom one. Because then you're divided by 0. You broke math. Okay, let's start with some examples right here. So, if you need to go back in the video, go ahead and go back and pause, so that way we can look about what all of our operations mean. First example, for f of x equals x cubed, g of x equals 3x minus 7, and h of x equals x squared minus 7, go ahead and find the following functions. First function, f times g minus h of x. Just like you can add and subtract more than two numbers and multiply and divide more than two numbers, we can do that with functions. The important thing here is going to be to break this thing down piece by piece by piece. So that's exactly how we're going to start off right here. Well, f times g minus h of x is really just kind of attach x to everything. f of x times g of x minus h of x. From here, it's just a substitution game and then a simplification game. So f of x was just x cubed. I like to go ahead and put parentheses around it. g of x, because I'm subbing in for the whole thing, subbing in for g of x, we would put in a 3x minus 7. Subtracting the entire function, so parentheses is really important here, the entire function h of x, which is x squared minus 7. Now it's up to us to do some algebra. So we can multiply in 3x to the 4th minus 7x cubed. And we can also distribute the negative. Minus x squared plus 7. And that's exactly our answer for this one. Over here, just f divided by g of x. Well, yet again, I think it's easiest to go ahead and translate. This would be f of x divided by g of x. From here is a substitution game. Well, f of x was just x cubed. g of x was 3x minus 7. It's important to notice, if I, you were to have to list out the domain, meaning every um, x that is valid, we actually couldn't include one of the x's. We don't want the bottom to equal 0, because then we'd be dividing by 0. So it turns out that doing some algebra over here, the domain would be all x that's not equal to 7 thirds. 
Seven thirds would not be allowed right here because the bottom would equal zero. All right, now let's switch our focus from algebra to composition of functions. In order to introduce this topic, let's start with an example. Maybe one that as a student you're all too familiar with. Okay, so it turns out that if I have a lot of tests in a week, I'm going to need to study more. It's going to lead to later nights. And maybe I have a function that predicts, based on the number of tests per week, how many hours am I going to study at night. So I have something that takes me from number of tests in a week to the total numbers of hours studying. It helps me predict that. Now, if you're up late studying, you're probably going to need some caffeine. So really, we could say something like this. Maybe the number of hours studying, we have something that, based on that number, gives me a prediction of amount of coffee consumed. Now, the idea of composition is this. If I have a function that gets me from one spot to the next, and then another function that gets me from here to here, can we go ahead and just get straight from here to here by skipping the middleman? Can we do something like this? And the answer is yes. So, going back, maybe we say that this function that gets me from number of tests in a week to number of hours studying, let's give that a name. Let's call that f of x. Now the function that gets me from number of hours studying to the amount of coffee consumed, let's give that a different name. Let's call it g of x. Now it turns out that we can start talking about this idea of composition of functions. This red line will be g of f of x. Now what this means is that I plug in f of x, the number I get from f of x, into g of x, which you can kind of see why we would do that. You almost think about working on the inside out. You first start off with a number here, and then you get a number here through f of x. Now that we have a number here, we plug that into g of x, and we get our total number. The way we'll denote this is g circle f, big parentheses, x. This is going to be pronounced g of f of x. Before we get to an example on composition, I want to take a brief sidestep and talk about function language. We really like to abuse notation in mathematics, and unfortunately this can be a point of confusion. So let's talk about it. If I give you a function f of x equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 7, there's nothing really too special about the x. We typically think of x as our domain value, meaning just kind of the numbers we plug in, and f of x as the output, the y value. Perhaps a better way to think of this function would be a fill in the blank game. Now, whatever is inside this parenthesis, all you're going to do to it is plug it in appropriately. So, really, what we mean by f of, you know, just random parenthesis is something like this. For this rule, instead of 3x squared minus 6x plus 7, you should be thinking that whatever's on the inside of the parentheses right here, we just plug it in wherever you saw an x. Just fill in the blanks. So this will allow us to handle, and maybe in the easiest case, numbers. f of 2. Well, that thing is just plug in the 2 where you see an x. You've probably done this a million times with a number. That would be 3 times 2 squared minus 6 times 2, plus 7. Perhaps a little bit more complicated, however just as easy, let's now look at f of x squared minus 7. We actually don't have to plug just numbers in, and this will be our first example of composition and a tool that we're going to use. Now rely on this way of thinking about functions. f of blank is equal to 3 times blank minus 6 times blank plus 7. So whatever's in the parentheses, plug it in where you see that blank or that x. So f of x squared minus 7, that's now my blue star, if you will, really is just 
three times, well, ran it to an x, have to plug it in. x squared minus 7 squared. Moving on, minus 6, oh, there is an x. Think about it as a blue star. Whatever was on the inside, we have to now copy-paste it. x squared minus 7 goes there. Last but not least, we get a plus 7 at the end. Can't forget about it. Function language can be confusing. I think it's best to think about it as a fill-in-the-blank game. So hopefully that helps a little bit in the coming examples. All right, now let's come to an example. Now we've kind of got the idea that this composition of functions operations, this f of g of x or g of f of x, is really just getting from one step to the third step by cutting the middleman. Let's try it out practically with some algebra practice. Okay, so example. For the functions f of x equals negative 3x plus 1 and g of x equals x squared, go ahead and find the following. f of g of x and last but not least g of f of x. Yet again, just like the algebra um, cases that we were doing earlier, it's better to go ahead and translate this in my personal opinion. What do I mean by that? The first step right here might be to note that f of g of x is really just g plugged in as the input of f. So f of parentheses, g of parentheses, x. From here it becomes a substitution game and then a simplification game. All right, the first substitution I like to make is plug in for g of x. All right, so g of x was just x squared. So now we're talking about f of x squared. What this tells me is that anywhere I see an x in f of x, I now have to input x squared. So x squared is my new input up here. So all this becomes is negative 3. Oh crap, there's an x right there. Plug in an x squared now, plus 1. So the new function ends up becoming negative 3x squared plus 1 after some simplification. Over here, moving on. Yet again, it's probably best to go ahead and just do our translation first. This really is g of f of x. And now it's a game of substitution and simplifying. Plugging in for f of x, we have g of negative 3x plus 1, and now input this wherever you see an x in g of x. Well, there's only one spot for it, so I plug this in where I see that x. What we get then is negative 3x plus 1 squared. Okay, so now I just simplify it out, and it becomes, after doing some algebra, 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. The difficulty is going to be probably in this step to this step or here to here, just remembering to plug in whatever you see on the inside of the parentheses for the entire x, wherever you see an x. Some important tips that are going to help you out when you're trying to complete some problems within this section are going to be as follows. So, the first thing that we did in all of these processes was translate first. Now, we're going to be landing on some things like, for example, f minus g parentheses of x. It's most helpful, in my personal opinion, to go ahead and translate this to f of x minus g of x until you get very good at recognizing what that means. Similarly, and probably a better and more important example when you should be doing this, is g of f of x, composition of functions. It's best to go ahead and translate this to g of parentheses f of x. This leads us to our second tip, once we're at this stage of the problem. Substitute and then simplify. For instance, when we tackled our composition function, what we first did was plug in for f of x. And then we plugged in for g of x, and then we simplified. Also up here, we first off substituted for f, and then g, and then we worried about the algebra. So remember, translate first, then go ahead and sub in and simplify. Hopefully this is making a little bit more sense. 
go out and get the homework, and we'll see you next time.